Module 1. Creating and defining a flow model. The site to be modeled is located near an airport just outside of Waterloo. The superficial geology of the site consists of an upper sand and gravel aquifer, a lower sand and gravel aquifer, and a clay and silt aquifer separating the upper and lower aquifers. The relevant site features consist of a plain refueling area, a municipal water supply well field, and a discontinuous aquifer zone. The first module will take you through the steps necessary to generate a new model data set using the visual model flow modeling environment. Okay, and from file, we create new project and we name it as anything. This window is used to select the desired project information, the units associated with various flow and transport parameters, and the desired engines for the flow and transport simulation. From the numeric engine, we will use model flow 2005. Now we have set the project title, the units, and the numeric engine. The start date and start time of the model are corresponding to the beginning of the simulation time period. This window displays the default parameters values for the transport simulation. In order to support all of the available options for the multi-species reactive transport programs, Visual Model Flow requires you to set up the initial conditions for the contaminant transport scenario. For example, the number of chemical species, names of each chemical species, initial concentrations, decay rates, partitioning coefficients, and etc. Each scenario is referred to as a transport variant, and you can have more than one variant for a given flow model. By default, Visual Model Flow creates a variant named VAR. 0, 0, 1. We will now edit this variant to set up a model for transport processes. The default transport variant will use MT3DMS as the numeric engine with no sorption or reaction terms. And as we notice here, Below the sorption and reaction settings, there are three tabs labeled as species, model parameters, and species parameters. Visual Model Flow allows us to use the real names of the simulated chemicals in order to easily identify them in contour maps and graphs. This completes the setup for the transport engine. You're now ready to exit the transport engine option. This window allows us to create the model grid. In this step, you can import a site map, specify the dimensions of the model domain, and define the number of rows, columns, and layers for the finite difference grid. This window 
appeared to prompt us to define the extents of the model area. Visual model flow will read the minimum and maximum coordinates from the site map and suggest the default location that is centered in the model domain. So this is the project after importing the map and showing the grid. At this time, we may add an additional map for improved visualization. We will add an air photo of the site. In order to map the pixels of the image to a coordinate system, the image must have two GR reference points with known coordinates 